Hey, how's it going? Lee here. Another episode of Heavy Art Talk. I am stoked uh, for two reasons. Number one, I actually haven't done one of these in like a month in terms of just like, uh, you know, maybe there have been videos that have come out, but talking with another artist, I'm a bit deprived after my trip from Japan. But I'm also extremely excited because I have Daniel Hassel, who goes by Draugr on Instagram with me. Uh, we've been online friends for probably like the past eight months or so. Uh, definitely message and chat in the Discord Metal Art Atelier. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, but it's great to talk to him in person. So without further ado, I'm going to have Daniel join me. What's up, man? What up? Not Thanks that we didn't just talk for like 10 minutes before <laughs> this. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, what have you been listening to lately? Uh, New Blood Incantation. Yeah, that's, on that's repeat, been, right? That's been the one on repeat. Yeah, absolutely love it. Yeah, um, it's next level, man. They're making a statement. It really is, and the fact that it was like a the Tangerine Dream Studio, right? Mm -hmm. That they recorded at Germany, insane. I think. Yeah, yeah, such a cool uh, like mix of creators there, and the song with like Tangerine Dream too is awesome. It definitely feels like a new chapter for them. Like uh, it's a yeah. I mean, whether it's better or not than like their past material just depends on your taste. But in terms of the ambition, the cohesion, the songs going into one another, I mean, you can't write this type of album two years into your band's career. Like it True. takes this amount of time. So I don't know, man. It's, yeah, it's it really is something else. I've been stoked on it. Yeah, like uh, it's definitely like not as weird as their past stuff. Um, but that's also cool because they do it in a really neat way and they still kind of remain weird in some of the things they do so yeah i'm excited for them a for sure. anything else that you've been listening to um been listening to the new damnation's domain album put out by iron fortress i don't know about like i hadn't listened to that band much prior to but i saw a lot of you know promotion for it and i was checking it out it was pretty cool some delaware death metal um and then other than that, I've been jamming to some alternative rock, some Catherine wheel, um, and some, some dungeon synth. What is Catherine wheel? I'm not familiar with them. They're, I believe they're from England, the UK. They're like nineties, okay. nineties rock. Um, just like, you know, as nineties rock as you can get while not being like too much like radio rock, you know? So um, it's not, it's not too grungy. No, it's not. It's it's like it, it's weird in the sense that it's very like the opposite of that. It's just chill, very okay. palatable music to listen to. So sometimes listening to to death metal can get a little overwhelming when working on stuff. So I mix it up, and that's been one that's that's been a rock band that's been on a lot lately. Um, just because it's like you know the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'm with you. I definitely fluctuate between the two of like. I mean, it's metal and hardcore at the gym and yeah. mostly driving, honestly. And then when I'm like inking or drawing or whatever, like I really do want something that's fairly calming in a way or like it can just kind of create an atmosphere. Yeah, so for sure. like black metal uh, works for that in some cases. Um, I was for some reason, fall too is like a kind of like an indie rock time for me. Like, uh, you ever listen to the band Grizzly Bear? They're not around anymore, but they were really big in like 2010 or so. Okay. But that was like big college music for me. So that's like, I don't know. You might really like it. Uh, anybody I'll, I'll listening, it like it's very <laughs> intricate orchestrated music, but presented in a way that's very, uh, easy to listen to. Okay. That's cool. So, yeah. Highly recommend that. Yeah, man. Um, so we could start in a number of ways talking about art. Um, but I guess just like right off the top, like kind of what was, you know, discovering drawing and art like when you were a kid, like what first inspired you? Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure like most people have been drawing for as long as I can remember. Um, yeah. I can't really think of like a point where it all started, but like, um, I mean, I was always inspired by like a number of things. Um, Growing up, like video games were huge. Like seeing concept art from like Halo or like Gears of War were like really big into really big influences into like 
me kind of discovering a different world of art other than like traditional like masters type stuff which i always like in, had enjoyed and like going to museums and stuff but this was like something totally different you know yeah um and then like finding warhammer art for the first time was like i mean insane that was like where it all kicked off i was like i just want to make this for <laughs> the rest of my life <laughs> like getting um, mean. yeah it was like i'd say that was probably like the, the the biggest moment of like growing up um in terms of like getting inspiration for making art and the type of direction i wanted to go with my art um because that i mean that was just a totally different world of stuff and it's like video games is one thing but then like warhammer is something totally different <laughs> yeah no, uh, do you recall like the first time you saw Warhammer art? Like, was it? Did you go into like, uh, man? I mean, when I when I was like growing up and stuff, there was like a Games Workshop mm -hmm. uh, store in the mall. So, like, did you ever go in there and like, was that your first exposure? Or how did that look? Yeah, I had a, like a really weird first experience with Warhammer because it was it was kind of like that, and I think mostly in um, the United States that was like primarily how Warhammer was presented. It was like there was always like a small games workshop in a mall and that was kind of like what you had in the states is like a, in terms of a warhammer experience yeah <clears throat> but um my dad like gave me one time was like picking me up and he like brought me this tiny warhammer miniature and i, I was like looking at it, i was like what is this like this is so cool it's like a, a little space ring yeah and it's like not like a toy but it's like you know a lot cooler than the typical type of stuff so then he told me where i got it and i went in there and i was like overwhelmed i saw there was like the um <clears throat> game store that i went to it, not there anymore it's in a small town um about like 30 40 minutes outside baltimore called westminster uh real rural town um just like surrounded by farms um but they had an awesome games workshop shop and uh going in there they had this huge like adrian smith painting of like the like the the emperor in the throne room with Horus and Sanguinius. Yeah. And it's like a pretty iconic piece. Even if you don't aren't like into Warhammer, you probably have seen it at some point because it's, it's beautiful. But I mean, like just seeing that for the first time was probably like, well, I, I don't even care like how complicated the game is. Like I want to figure out how I can play this and like just absorb all the art. And then I, um, I got like a, uh, while I was there, I got a miniature, like how to paint space Marines book. And that was like, I started it all for me. I brought that book everywhere. <laughs> it, it just had like a little bit of uh, like painting techniques and how to paint models. Yeah. Um, but then it had a really cool section where it would break down like um, how you can paint like larger chapters. So like more popular factions. And then the back, it just had this like crazy uh, like gallery of um, the different chapters you could paint. So it was just like, all, it's like one, just like one stance of like a space brain, but like they were all in so many different colors. Like, mm -hmm. I was just looking at it. I was like, this is, this is crazy. This is awesome. It's like, it was like simultaneously like a, like grimdark as they say, but then like colorful. And I was like, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. There's like a, a million of those different space Marine. I mean, are, are those considered factions then, or is space Marine itself a faction? I get a little confused. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Um. <laughs> yeah, I've spent the last five. I've spent, you know, okay. So I knew I was interviewing you, right? Yeah. Two two things happened in the last week. I uh, so Josh Freakus, friend of the show. Yeah. Definitely uh, follow him on Instagram. He posted yep, this awesome, uh, right. shirt that I pre-ordered that that was like I'd rather listen to Bolt Hammer and paint miniatures, and I was like, I'm buying that shirt, but. I need to learn more about what the hell this shit is about <laughs> or else I'm just going to get questions about it. Yeah. I have like the books because I've always loved Warhammer art, but it's been daunting the lore, the gaming, there's so much to it. So that, and then I knew I was interviewing you. So I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do some research. I've watched six hours of lore videos <laughs> on YouTube at least. And then, I, and then I keep getting recommended on my YouTube. Um, yeah. Specifically, I I really like this guy's channel, uh, Bricky. Do you watch his his videos at all? He's I've, a I've really watched some of his stuff before. Yeah, he's a funny guy, man. He's definitely like charismatic. I like him. Yeah, but then he was talking about his tournaments and stuff, and I'm literally just listening to him <laughs> drawing, and I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. He literally could be talking about gibberish, but I'm listening to it for like two hours straight because yeah. he's so 
interesting. So I've like absorbed a lot of like random stuff about Warhammer in the last week. Um, I don't remember the original point, but I just want to let you know like <laughs> where I'm at yeah. right now. Yeah, it's it, it's daunting. It's like a it's it's super overwhelming because yeah. there's so much like story that exists. And I mean, you probably could have listened to like six hours of lore just on like one character or the Horus <laughs> Heresy. There's like a the four Horus hour Heresy. series yeah. uh, just on that. now. Here's my thing. I think out of everything Warhammer related, mm-hmm. uh, because I've heard people can have different interests within this and still be considered legitimate fans. Like some people yeah, are sure. just painters and that's yeah. all they do. If I didn't already spend so much time doing my own art, I would go that route. But I really like just learning about the stories and like the sci-fi horror element. And there's so much detail to it. Uh, It's very Dune-esque. Very much like Dune. Um, Yeah. you can. I've been really digging that. Yeah. You can tell there's a lot that's like pulled from Dune, like the emperor and clearly the religious aspect. Yes. Yeah. Like the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus is called in like... Warhammer is very much like um, similar to like how they do like technological stuff, and it, it it's it's all very like similar. But it's just like then they just added like a million different things to one little character or faction. And yeah, it's so in depth. Yeah, that's that's like a it's true though. Like um, I didn't really play the game itself until like a couple years ago. I, yeah, because I didn't really have anybody to play the game with growing up so or really like the mental capacity to learn it so i just read the books it is do you like gaming like i do i do it's like i i find like the story and the art much more interesting i think that's just because what i've always like been into in terms of like other gaming type stuff and obviously the art aspect of it um it takes a lot of like mental preparation. It's like, it's like getting ready to play like dark souls or something like that. It's like, for me, it's like, I can't just sit down and play it. I'm like, I got to prepare myself to to go do this. We have to know your opponent really well. I mean, it's, it's a lot, dude. Yeah. And I think, I think what's interesting too, from my understanding, and we can't talk about Warhammer's entire time or else, you know, (laughs) we're going to lose some people, but it seems like they don't take a lot of care and making all of the factions or the armies like equal in strength. It's like known that there's some that just kind of suck or like they're not going to win, which I thought was interesting because a lot of games, you would argue well-made games, want to make their not equal chance, but if you have the right strategy, any type of opportunity can exist for some army to win. Like, do you feel like that's kind of like part of the gameplay too? Like, it's maybe not, I don't know, well thought out in terms of fairness. It's like a fighting game where you know there's like five characters that are great and 25 that suck. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's like you're like before playing Mortal Kombat or something, you are trying to pick a character that you know is just going to be worse than the person you're fighting. Right. It's, it's very much like that where it's, it's kind of like, um, it's it is very odd in that and there's like there's so many different builds and like um sheets that people have built where it's like oh this is the meta and it's like this is like what this player uses in this tournament like this type of army build and i I just play for fun i don't play competitively so i am playing like i play with space wolves and that's like not a very really like a a meta like the viking looking marines right yeah yeah so So i learned some stuff (laughs) yeah yeah um so that's like not really like a really great army to play with, but I'm I just play it for fun. But um, I think that's probably the case with most people. Yeah. Uh, but some people, you know, like with any game, are a little maybe too into it. <laughs> what, what nerd culture, man? Yeah, uh, yeah. Be passionate yeah. about something. What about uh, Magic: The Gathering? Are you into that as well? Yes, I, lo- I love playing Magic. I play that casually too. I don't really play that competitively. Um, Is that a more a fun of- game? I have a lot more fun playing that game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like Warhammer's cool and it's fun and playing with models and stuff is so sick, but <laughs> right, it's like and, the tactile quality to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, that's like a, that's like an experience you'll get nowhere else, but magic is just like, uh, it's, it's so much fun. I, I, um, play with my friends in Baltimore all the time. We play commander, which is like a four person game mode. You can play it with more, but like typically you play with four and there's like a lot of politics involved too. <laughs> that happen in that so it's like kind of making deals with people or like if somebody's stronger than the other person and they're like 
kicking everybody's ass. You're like, all right, we got to go kill him. <laughs> we got to take him out of this game. <laughs> so nice. like that aspect of it is, is like a lot more enjoyable than Warhammer. Cause Warhammer is like, you don't really get that unless you're playing with, I guess, multiple people, but right. I guess Makes in magic, sense. it feels more personable. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I'm starting to learn more and more about these things. And, um, yeah, like you, the Warhammer art's always been interesting. But I think when I was a teenager and stuff, I didn't have the funds to buy the figurines and stuff. Um, plus, I was distracted by Yu-Gi-Oh! and card, yeah. you know, the, the, those those collector things, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I was in a, a similar boat. I wasn't going out and really getting the models. I was just kind of getting the books. And it was like, just because I knew there'd be some art in there. I would, like, well, buy yeah. rule books just for, like, some of the art because I was like... I. I like love how this looks and I don't really like, I know I'm not going to play, but I was just like, I'm just going to read this book and learn about the game and learn about all the different characters. Yeah. I just, I bought a, uh, I think a nineties, like chaos space Marines book. It was like a rule book, but it had some good Adrian Smith illustrations and stuff. Realms of chaos. Is that what it is? I own that, that no, that's the late eighties and that's pretty pricey. I do have that. I have, um, the second one as well, the the bigger volume, uh, Legion of the Damned. I have that, but I got a um, a smaller. I don't know what you call it. I can show you when I get off. Okay. This this one's pretty affordable though. It's like a twenty dollar book. What about uh, metal for you? When did you start getting into that? So I was always like, I grew up listening to the classics, uh, like Sabbath, Ozzy, Priest, and maiden and slayer and all them but i never really like took the next step until much later in my life um probably when i was getting out of high school okay um it wasn't until i mean probably four four years ago i went to like a hardcore show for the first time and that was like i mean that changed it all for me in terms of like learning about the death metal scene and like hardcore and and that type of thing i'm like I'm fairly newer to that and I've been just diving into it all ever since. Um, and it's just cause I didn't have like access to any of that, like growing up, I just didn't have like an ability to like go out and <clears throat> kind of find that, uh, that music, that type of music. There wasn't like shops or like record shops around or so there was like a, it's a, it's your friend group too, you know? Yeah, exactly. You, you kind of get exposed by your friends. For sure. Although I might have been like the guy who introduced a lot of metal to other people thinking about it, but yeah. you know, but I had to share it, and sharing it strengthens the the metal bond. You know, it's true. Yeah, my friends are a big, a big, uh, important factor in me discovering all the music that I listen to now, and um, like them taking me to shows and like them showing me like you know, okay, you like this, but like you should check this out, and it was like. Probably the big moment for me was my friend Jack showing me Bolt Thrower and just hearing Bolt Thrower, like Realms of Chaos for the first time. It was like so insane. I was like, this is this is awesome. It was like, I need to listen to more of this. And that turned into like Suffocation and Morbid Angel and all that. And it just hasn't stopped since. <laughs> I'm with you, man. It's 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 been a lifelong obsession. Getting into hardcore though, that uh, that's relatively new for me though. I was definitely a metal first, you know, hardcore later type fan, um, and I think it's just the metal imagery and, like I said, it's just what you're exposed to uh, was always a little more like akin to my interests. Yeah, for sure. I, it would have been hard to convince me to be straight edge when I was like 16. Let's put it that way too. Yeah, you know, right. That wouldn't I have think- been in the cards for me. I think it's like the art that's also attractive to yeah. like the, the metal aspect too is like one thing that kind of got me more down that road. And I, I love hardcore, but like to me, I think metal will always be, you know, my favorite thing ever. And like just the art and the insane stuff that's associated with it all is like probably a big aspect of that. Cause I might've not really gone down that road unless I didn't see like, not cool art. And obviously like I've been showing the stuff that is like, that is good that I probably wouldn't have looked at otherwise. Um, just based off of covers. And I guess that's like part of the discovery process too, is like finding stuff that looks cool to you. Um, but like hardcore doesn't 
hardcore has like a lot of cool art, but it, I wouldn't say it's like on the same scale as metal. It just doesn't go like a lot of it just doesn't go like that extra step sometimes that I feel like metal does. Yeah, it's different. There's like uh, I feel like a, a good hardcore shirt or piece of merch or, or album cover a lot of times is it's going more for iconic graphic and like just striking like yeah. bold and like yeah. that is hard to accomplish in itself it doesn't require the tedium of a really nice painting but like getting that lightning in a bottle moment that like is a memorable cover is just as challenging in a lot of ways you know what i mean it's just a different type of challenge yeah i i agree and the xerox, xerox style too is is super cool yeah uh so like top four classic death metal bands what do you think that would be for you and by classic Ooh. i mean formed pre-2000 okay hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go on personal favorites yeah yeah of course uh it'd probably be bolt thrower would be number one for me uh suffocation obituary mm, and then it's really a toss-up between more like the groovy ones. stuff yeah yeah <laughs> i do and uh i think it's either probably a toss-up between morbid angel and death but i think i'm gonna have to go with death okay that's a good list man that's a good list yeah i think i'd I, mine would be very similar well would you what changes would you make on your end So just straight forward death metal ish. So like I won't say like Opeth or something. I would go death, morbid angel, suffocation, and then probably cannibal corpse. I like I I I Swedish death metal is cool, but mm -hmm. I don't grab for it nearly as much as like uh, American death metal. I guess. I mean I like like cryptopsy Canadian. You know like yeah. I like the really like kind of more brutal and extreme or progressive, but the like more punky influence and like the buzzsaw guitar, like I dig it, but it's not my favorite. I think yeah. a lot of it's cause I'm, I'm a drummer and like drum groove, like, I don't know the, the whole D beat thing, like at a certain point, it's not really exciting for me, but like hearing Mike Smith do like sick blasts and then like <laughs> yeah. a pummeling, like, you know, that's like way cooler to me. So I don't know. I mean, I like all of it just to be clear for anyone listening, oh, yeah, but same. it's nice to have preferences and kind of like actually be honest about your listening habits, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like I really don't grab for Entomb that much. I, I don't find myself grabbing for them as much as I feel like I should either. Um, I, I do really like Entombed, but like, I think most of the time I'm putting probably somebody on that, like, Mount Rushmore top four list before I do Entombed, but I, I do really enjoy Entombed. Yeah. Kind of getting back to art. Of course, we, we bounce around a lot here. Um, so you got the book on model painting, but that's a whole different art skill than just like drawing and creating stuff from imagination and all that. Were you kind of doing both at the same time or what was that like in your teens? where in a lot of cases, that's when you start being a little more intentional about your art. You know what I mean? Like, how did that kind of look like in the high school years? Yeah. Um, that book was probably one of the larger influences on like what I decided to try and do with my art at the time. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I had always like, for whatever reason, I had always just loved drawing like battles. <laughs> like draw people fighting yeah and um <laughs> even before figures like i would draw like dinosaurs eating each other and stuff and <laughs> like stuff oh, like that funny. so yeah so i don't know why uh i've always liked drawing like fighting uh did your did like, your teachers ever call your parents and be like hey have you ever seen your son's drawings <laughs> dude that happened to my brother when really? he was when he was young i was wondering if it happened to you 
I, not that I recall, I'd have to ask my, <laughs> my mom or dad that, but I did draw like on my homework all the time. And I yeah. got in trouble a lot for that because I draw all over my tests and all over my homework. So. And like the little margins, man, that's what <laughs> I did. Yeah. 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 And like the columns on the side or like the, the bleed edge that they had and everywhere. But uh, yeah, going back to what you said about the, the, the model painting, I wasn't doing as much model painting just because I was like, not really. I didn't really have like the resources to be able to go out and get the paint because the paint's expensive too. Oh really? Um, yeah, I had a couple like, like, kind of small like paint kits, but I was like painting, but I really wasn't like painting, painting. Like I had like a color scheme in mind, but I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but I did like draw a lot of stuff. Try try and draw a lot of stuff directly from that book. Like I would try and create like my own space marine chapter or something and i would write out all the lore and then like in that book too it had like a uh, like an army list builder like um i was supposed to build out squads so then i would just like draw squads of dudes and i'd give them names and <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> seem like, like much has changed actually <laughs> no, not much has changed i was i was just talking to my mom about it i was like uh it's kind of crazy i'm just doing like the same thing i did when i was a kid i'm just <laughs> i'm just drawing like, the same kind of stuff just like have been working harder at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I know what you mean, man. Yeah. Well, that's funny. Yeah. So then, I guess, when did it become more serious for you or like something where you could get gigs illustrating? Like, kind of how did yeah. that then evolve to there? Uh, uh, it's kind of a strange journey that I've had with that, I guess you could say, because I am... Um, like in school, I really didn't like, I, I was always drawing and that's what I've always loved to do. Um, yeah. But my parents like always encouraged me to do what I wanted to do. But like, I think it was just other outside influences and like, just like kind of um, like the general thought process of it all. Like, I didn't think I'd be able to do it for a career. Like, I didn't think I'd just be able to do it. So I kind of like pivoted into graphic design and I did that a lot of my later years in high school. I went to school for that. Um, and then I was in between jobs, um, like three ish years ago. And I was just like, I hadn't drawn for a little bit. I was like, I would draw here and there, but I wouldn't like draw stuff that I just love to draw. Um, mm -hmm. and I kind of got like, you know, stuck in the machine for a little bit where I was just like clocking in and out, not really doing like stuff that I love to do. Um, so then I just but started still drawing. graphic design, just not stuff you're passionate about. Yeah. And and like I thought that was something that I did enjoy, and the more I got involved in the industry, the more I just realized I did not want to keep doing that at all. And I looked for different like creative outlets because it just started to get redundant, and there was a lot of bureaucracy where I was. So it was just kind of like, you know, it, for lack of a better term, it just sucked. <laughs> I did not enjoy it, and um, so I would find myself drawing like in between meetings, and when I was in between jobs, I would actually I was like you know, taking time to draw and kind of go back to what we talked about before I was like, just kind of illustrating dudes and characters. And, um, my partner at the time, uh, my partner still, uh, I was talking to and she was like, um, why don't you just like try this out? Like, why don't you just try and work towards this and, and focus on it? And I really never had an opportunity like that before. And, um, I was like, all right, I'll try it. And I decided to like try and take it seriously and actually like, make it something that I want to do because, you know, I love it. And uh, I really haven't looked back since. Yeah. So are you doing work and this at the same time? Or what's that kind of looking like at this point in time? I mean, as of now, this is what I'm focusing on 100%. That's, that's cool. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm lucky that I saved up a little, you know, from my past job. And um, I really just wanted to, like, see where this could take you know, see where this could go. And I just wanted to like put all my time and effort that I normally would in like a normal work day towards working to get better. And that was like my main focus. I was like, uh, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but <clears throat> I'm going to work, you know, my ass off on this and try and get better. And, you know, that's what I've been that's doing. Awesome. I appreciate it. Well, I think too, in not speaking to you specifically as much as just, I don't know, just kind of how I see things, but like any time that you're spending now fully dedicated to it, even if you were to get another job and do this at the same time, it was all 
worth it. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, like I think sometimes people fall into a trap of like feeling like they failed if they have to get another job because life's expensive. But right. like, seriously, like it doesn't mean you got to fucking quit and do every, everything that you work towards and got better at your craft. Like it was all worth it. Cause now you have two streams of income and you're better at the thing that you love. So I don't exactly. know, just like, I, I think it's important, especially as the world keeps changing to make it hard to have a career in illustration to like, just, reimagine what success is for yourself individually. Cause for me, it doesn't necessarily mean being a full-time illustrator. Cause I really right. value just like the freedom of being able to take projects. And I, 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 you know, I like having that balance of full-time job and this, at least at this point in time. Yeah. And I was trying to get like a, I had been trying to get a full-time like design job while all this was happening. Um, and it's just that like, at least I think creatively and in the tech industry job wise, things are not really that great right now. No, they're and not. I can tell you over the past, like really over this period of time, how many interviews I've had and just like it's gone nowhere. So I think in a weird way, it was like kind of fate where it was like yeah. pushing me to just keep work, working on this. And it's been, you know, it's been stressful and not easy at all, but you know, to your point, like it's a period of self-discovery and like, I'm fortunate enough to have the opportunity where I'm just able to like actually spend time and dedicate myself to something that I want to get better at. And that doesn't mean that I won't, you know, take a part-time job, you know, in the future or even full-time job in the future. But like <clears throat> just this period of time was like, I mean, so necessary to like truly rediscover like my love for art and my love for like that process. Amen to that, man. Very wise. Um, question about kind of like graphic design and uh, schooling and stuff. Did you like have drawing classes and stuff as part of that curriculum? Or like, would you say you're pretty much self-taught entirely? You're kind of a little bit of a mixture there. Yeah, I would say I'm like self-taught entirely because I, yeah. I learned some like traditional uh, art like while I was in school and I learned art history, but I really wasn't like making like art art. Like I wasn't like, it wasn't like in depth to the point where it was like, I was learning a lot about like the process of making art because everything that I learned there, I just have really tossed out the window in terms of like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, making art. It was like, I, I've learned like, <clears throat> I've learned a lot more about like the art that I want to make in my process just by like failure and, you know, the, um, just like my own personal goal of like not getting to where I want to be. Yeah. I just learned way more. Um, and that's not to say that's like how everybody should learn it, but that's just what works best for me. Um, so like, I, I, I really didn't have like anything beyond a high school education in terms of like, you know, in a, in a like informative sense of, of drawing stuff. Yeah. I feel you. I, I'd say I'm kind of in a similar camp. Like self-taught is, is, is kind of a hard thing to identify nowadays because it's like well if you get real critical with it it's like well you watch a youtube video at some point right yeah and like right. i can say that for myself but yeah I, I didn't go to art school and i don't know if that would have been the best route for me either yeah i'm kind of like um i, I kind of have just like the mentality of like uh, i like just like accumulating a lot of information and then like taking that information and like uh just applying it to what i want to do so like you know, a lot of my like process in in making all this art has just been like you know consuming art <laughs> whether it be like in books or listening to videos about it or heavy art talk <laughs> like listening to artists uh yeah um so like like processing that hearing like uh, other people talk about their art and their process and then just like applying that in a way that's uh unique to myself or like my process or something even just coming up like subconsciously like yeah. working on something that's like oh let me try this and it's like i don't exactly know where that thought came from or like why i thought that but i'm sure it came from somewhere along the road of <laughs> stuff that i've been listening to <laughs> yeah no man and i uh how do i say this without complimenting myself um let's just let's pretend i I'm not affiliated with heavy art talk and I'm like objective. <laughs> I think the th 
things that are helpful is not only like the little like nuggets of technical details that you learn along the way from like really good artists, but yeah. it's also realizing that they've all been where you're at in any point. If you're having a bad art yeah. day, you've created something you don't like, like they've been there. And then just the sense of like pretty much everybody is is very humble and friendly and they've been humbled by their own failures over time. Yeah. So like it creates a community of people that have good intentions towards one another. So like I found that emotional support just as helpful as the technical support. You know what I, I mean? I agree. And like, um, I guess another aspect of me not really wanting to, or really not me thinking I could pursue art as like, um, something I could do job wise, uh, like coming out of high school was like, obviously like the social media aspect of it where you see like what other people are making and you're like, I can never do that. You know, it's like, and, yeah. and that's like, you, you shouldn't do that. Like you shouldn't like compare yourself to like somebody else like that. But then also like, I didn't realize that like everybody has been at the point that you were at at some point, like every artist has been on like that type of art journey where they're like, you know, trying to figure things out. Yeah. Um, so like, like listening to like, you know, without hyping up heavy art, talk too much, <laughs> uh, like listening to like everybody talk about that is like, is really important. It was important for me. It was important for me to hear that because, you know, a lot of times it's like, sometimes I'm just thinking like, what am I doing? Or like, what am I like, you know, sometimes you start a sketch and you're just like, do I even know how to make art anymore? <laughs> Where you're like yeah. trying to draw something and it's just not working. So like hearing, hearing like people talk about that and like people that are like, <clears throat> you know, great role models talk about that is really important. And it was, you know, it was important for me because it was like, I, I needed to hear that. You need to hear that like other people go through the same thing or like you think you're alone in it at all. And then it just is not good for you mentally. Definitely. Yeah. The whole, uh, comparing yourself to others thing. I've, uh, that's like kind of a somewhat of a current trap I'm in. You know, it's like a revolving door. There's always going to be something yeah. that's a s small negative trap in your mind. But that's that's kind of the current one. And I think it's when we were talking off air, I'm working on a big piece right now. Yeah. And I've been very confident in how I want to draw it uh, and like map it out. And like I kind of had a vision and I did it. But then I got the lines down and I'm like, man, I could render this in like 10 different ways. I had to like make a decision on how I wanted to render it. And um, it was hard to do that without comparing yourself to others. Because yeah. it's like, oh, do I go for a stark, high contrast, black, white? How much watercolor do I add here? But then maybe that's too frilly. I want it to be bold and strong, you know, strong line work. Right. Uh, but now it's <clears throat> stiff, you know, it's like <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm trying to find that yeah. right balance. So I think it'll turn out good. It's more just stay in the course, but uh but at the same time, at a certain point, if you maybe don't compare yourself to others in terms of like your worth or your value, but if if you can study other people that you think are yes. better than you, that'll yes. that will make you better. So it's like finding that Absolutely. right balance, man, because that in itself be like, I think that person is better at that than me and I want to improve at that. I mean, why not study from them? Yeah, exactly. And that, that was something I didn't do for a long time. I don't know why. It was just something I didn't do. Yeah. And um, and that's been like a huge important aspect of, of my art process is like looking at people that I really admire the that I admire like their work and like what they do well and trying to improve like certain aspects of my work. So like I mean, like looking at stuff that got me interested in art to begin with is like huge. And it's like, okay, like looking at, actually trying to look at it from like a technical perspective and like, uh, right. like some of that, those Warhammer artists, like now exactly. you're, uh, you, yeah, you've learned so much more about art. You can dissect it. Exactly. And, and like, even when I was looking at it then, I was like, this is amazing, but I wasn't really thinking about art in that way where I was like, okay, how can I achieve this? It was just like, this looks awesome. Like, I don't know if I'd ever be able to make this. <laughs> yeah. So now, now it's like the opposite where it's like, okay, like, I think I have an idea of like how I can try and do this. Let me see if I can, if I can do it and what, what I need to change in order to do that. Yeah. In, in terms of like the, 
kind of different eras of Warhammer art then. See, we're circling back, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, is there like a particular era that you like the art most of? Because like the late 80s looks different than like the like the 90s, like the early 90s, man. It was like really bright colors. Yeah. A lot of yellows and yes. stuff, you know, and then, and then it started to become more like m- mature and, um, you know, like I think like peak Adrian Smith technical ability, like yes. some of those case chaos space brains. I mean, yeah, those are amazing. And, and it's kind of cool seeing how much he improved uh, from like the eighties to, you know, late nineties and stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, that era of like the late eighties, probably until like the late nineties, early two thousands would be my favorite. I kind of like the, a lot of the art that like I saw in books and stuff was like, would have been like mid two thousands growing up. So like um, a lot of that was like, uh, I, I believe David Gallagher had kind of shifted his style at that point too. So he wasn't making like the white dwarf covers, like you're kind of mentioning where it's like really beautiful, like uh, poppy, like kind of almost cartoonish in a way, like designs. Yeah. It was, he was like kind of shifting towards like more of a realistic approach, um, kind of like Carl, Carl Koplinski and Adrian Smith's later work where it's, it's more realistic. There's like, a grittiness to it that's real and yeah. it was still kind of over the top but it wasn't like um this is ridiculous it was like oh this is like scary <laughs> yeah i mean dude i i love carl kapinski's work too i mean the guy's unreal talent yeah. and like there's just yeah the different eras i still think if i had to like choose the ian miller you know late 80s like mm-hmm. realm of chaos stuff that would be my favorite just based on my taste yeah. But it's so subjective, you know, because everyone brought something different to the table. It was really neat, man. Yeah, it was. I'm, I'm like, a, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with like how, how many different like styles there were, how like the artist grew over time, and like there was like so much color. But then like, then you like open up the books and you look at like the black and white drawings, and it's like, well, these are like ridiculous too in their own respect. Like these are yeah. cool too. It's like, it, it's like they did not miss with any of their drawings. Like they, they amazing every single time yeah <clears throat> um i brought up in the intro but we're both uh part of a very non-exclusive group uh that's in like the metal art atelier discord um that uh was started by a friend of ours online um skyler it goes it's skull and sword art on instagram please follow him but like I don't know what do you, what's kind of been your experience because you've been in the Discord for like what the last four or five months, six months or so, something like that. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, like around the half year mark, something around that. Yeah. Great, great. Anybody that loves fucking metal and art, check it out. <laughs> yeah, hit up, hit up Skyler because it's it is it is awesome and it's great for uh, feedback and work. You know, getting an idea of like things you need to change um, or if you're struggling with something. Uh, it's phenomenal for that as well. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the whole purpose of it. It's artists of any skill level. Um, but everybody kind of chimes in, like helps one another out. Sometimes it's just yeah. sharing music recommendations. Sometimes it's showing stuff, work in progress that it, it just, it, it, it creates more of a authentic social connection than like Instagram sometimes can. And it's in a group setting. Uh, the only things with it is right now it's a small group and it's actually really nice that way because people get to know one another. The larger yeah. it gets, just kind of try to, I don't know, read the room and follow in line. Like we have a good thing going. If we get an influx of new people, I don't want it to change the, uh, you know, the wholesome aspect to it too because everyone's really genuinely kind in there. So if you do join, be cool. That's my only thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, shout out to Skyler, uh, Kevin, Nameless Mist, yeah, um, Wolf Mungus. But who else is in there? Cassidy There's a lot of people. Pretty active. Remy, yeah. that cavernous arts there. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people, but uh, thank you to all you guys. It's 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 always a nice thing. I pop in there like once a day, and uh, I'm always just really happy to see everybody like sharing everything. Um, so we talked a little about some of your favorite artists. Are there any artists outside of the Warhammer universe that you also take a lot of influence from you can think of? 
Uh, yeah, I I really like. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I mean, Frazetta is like a huge influence and in, like a lot of what I like to do and the colors and whenever I like the one thing that I would like. I'm kind of trying to improve is like creating more action and like um, a sense of like like imposing kind of motion with characters and so like i've been looking at like a lot of like frazetta work and how he achieved that it's really um, dynamic yeah i mean like you look at every everything like he's done and like the characters and that just speaks so strongly i mean like you just you right see there. like that i always keep that right there uh, that's, yeah. that's like a tarzan plate but oh man, yeah there's so much going on there <laughs> i mean he's pulling it from the chimp but then there's the negative space i mean I think too, like I'm just trying to piggyback what you're saying. The artists that you really look up to and uh, you learn from, I mean, it's actually been really beneficial just having it right there. Like I got a rights in right there. I look at it every day, yeah. and I look at like what makes that image good, and then I got to yeah. stay true to like. You know, I I love tattoo art. I've always been very inspired by that. That's not going anywhere. So I always keep some classic flash and paintings by. But I don't know. It's cool, like curating your own gallery of influence i've been i've been trying to do that i um i've been trying to accumulate more prints of like uh artists on instagram uh that i really enjoy as well as like some of the legends like i have i have like a conan frazetta print it's like the one where he's on the horse and like the guy's kind of like got oh, his yeah. arms up um that's like an all-timer for me and then i have a print from uh dark wizard berserker he does like warhammer oh, yeah. tattoos um, he's very cool. super cool dude uh, I have a ditch witch print, um, and I have a couple prints from Blood Oath Garfield, mm -hmm. and his name is Austin. I, I'm gonna try and pronounce it correctly, but it's Du Ravage, I think. Um, I love his work. Um, so I've been trying to accumulate more and more of like that kind of thing of like people that like I admire that in the community. Um, yeah, and just surround myself with friends that art. too. I, I do a little exactly, bit of that as yeah. well, you know. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to trying to do that as well because it's like you get the best of both worlds where you're you know supporting an artist and a friend, but also like you're surrounding yourself with art that's influential and stuff that like you can look at and pull from. Yeah, kind of along those lines, and it hits both boxes for me. Um, Tyler Pennington, creep from six feet. He's yeah. been doing the daily drawings, but I I believe according to Instagram story, he's going to be selling all those at the end of the month. And well, at a pretty reasonable price, and you know, I bet they're going to sell out pretty quick. Just guessing, I mean, probably. But it, I, I would like to, to to buy one at least because, like, I'd love to have one of his originals. There's yeah. a lot of people I I have like on a list that when I have the funds, I want to just keep buying stuff. Some of yeah. them are friends. The um, his like horde realm creative prompt uh, pieces have just been going crazy. The work the work one is so awesome. Yeah. Oh, I, I've just been looking at him every day. It's amazing how much he can get done in one day. And like, yes, <laughs> technically he's behind, but it's like, yeah. dude, you've, you've completed a portfolio ready piece. Like every day it's, it's unreal. Yeah. Um, but you know what, uh, beyond being a stellar artist, he's just a really good person. So I, I think that's what makes him the whole package, you know? And I, sure. and I'm very comfortable speaking highly of him because he's a good dude and one of the best of this generation, no doubt. And it makes the me excited, you know? Quality of work is insane. Yeah. Insane. Well, cool. Enough of me gushing about people. Um here, let's 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 talk about the opposite coin. What's <laughs> something that maybe you see in the fantasy dark <clears throat> art metal sphere? that maybe you're sick of or something you wish you saw more in this genre of art, something that's lacking perhaps. Hmm. Obviously really just talking the opinions, you know, or just, yeah. just casual. Yeah. Hmm. Nothing comes to mind at the moment. Oh, I mean, really? I, mean Nothing? I, I, I just can't like, I'm trying to like, here, maybe I'll, I'll start. I'm blanking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here I'll pose a question. Are there okay. too many 
skulls? Like, are we relying on skulls too much? I don't know. I, I wonder. Really like I wonder if there's too many. Sometimes <laughs> I, I sometimes I, I think like, I how can it. I not I can draw a skull? I don't know. I can see it. Yeah, I I do I do really I I draw a lot of skulls and I love skulls. <laughs> I, I don't know if there could be too many skulls, but I I could I could totally see it. I could totally see it because there is like a. I mean, you see them everywhere. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just wonder. Um, yeah. I, okay, I'll say this. I feel like you at least just like curated just from what I see on my feed. I just don't see a lot of like, uh, I feel like there's not a lot of like super colorful stuff out there. Yeah. I feel like sometimes that's lacking. Okay. I feel like at least like in terms of like the variety of colorful stuff. Yeah. I know what you mean. Cause if you look at like, I mean, like death leprosy. There's like pinks in there, and it's still badass. Yes. So it's like, yes. who's who's the person who's willing to make those bold moves? And there are people out there. Uh, yeah, like for sure. six six slice Hayden comes to mind. You yeah. know, he uses some really cool bold colors. Uh, uh, Goldsworthy. Dan Goldsworthy for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he d- he does that type of stuff too. Yeah, it's a great point. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I guess that is that is missing a little bit. I know what you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe something I wish I saw more of. I think sometimes people get very caught up in the, let's say your livelihood doesn't depend on illustration completely. So you have the luxury of that. I think it would be nice if, or I would recommend people maybe not take on every job that they can and they spend time dedicated to their personal work so they can f- re- continue to remind themselves what they love about it to begin with. Cause sometimes I do, uh, just see or talk with folks, uh, and just, I sometimes catch them at a point where I can tell they're burned out. And it's like, maybe it's cause you gotta, you know, know when to maybe turn something away, but it's hard if you're getting really big name clients. So, it's a personal thing for everybody, but like having time and space to keep working on your craft instead of just repeating the same thing over and over is also important too. So I agree. I know, maybe that's kind of like a <clears throat> philosophical thing. And you, if anyone's listening to this, if this isn't the right time to hear that advice, then it's not the right fucking advice for you. But for some people, maybe that's what they need to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I mean, you can easily find yourself caught up in doing the same thing over and over again. And right, you lose the joy in it. Right. And forget, you know, why you're doing it all to begin with. I try to mix things in to like doing commission work and stuff where I'm like working on a personal piece on the side and like occasionally coming back to it and trying to like work on new stuff and add things just to remind myself why I'm doing it. Because like sometimes I do find myself getting caught up like on certain days working on, you know, just commission work. And some of it is like, well, I really want to make this. I have an idea for this. So I try to like, I think like that distribution of time is really important. Yeah. And I think drawing stuff too that isn't metal to learn how to make something maybe more like evil or something. So I don't know. You could draw anything and then if you're studying from life, you learn more about how reality works. You can implement it into adding a skull on it now it's evil you know what i mean like it's, it's a simple formula sometimes like, i yeah. don't know i hope i'm coming across right to the audience i just am, sometimes it's interesting to be critical of a a scene and maybe uh something that you wish you saw that's all but i see a lot of people also improving at a very rapid pace and a lot of it's because people are supporting one another so there's a lot of that already happening which is good Absolutely. What um, what are some areas that you're looking to work on in your own art, like areas of intentionality? Um, <clears throat> get better, I guess, improve my rendering, or at least my intentionality when it comes to rendering. I think sometimes I like find myself like in a process where I'm like, okay, I know how to like render out this armor, and I can like do this. Like, I don't do it with like the the mindset of like. I need to get this done quickly. So I'm going to do it quick. It just happens that way. 
And I think like trying to like actually sometimes sit down and be like, take the time and like look at something that I've done and be like, okay, like you worked on this way too fast. Some of the lines aren't as tight. It's not as clean as I want it to be. So like actually like sitting down and like being patient with the work is something that like I definitely want to improve on. Cause I found myself like doing that <clears throat> way too much. And I've always had like that problem with art, like not having like the patience to do something and just trying to like finish it. But I've gotten slowly better at that. And in terms of like things I actually want to improve on, I want to do like a, I want to do like get back into doing more like full art pieces and not just like characters. Cause I really do like drawing characters, but I'd like, love including colors and backgrounds to stuff and sometimes i when i'm doing that i'm working on that i i really get stuck on like how to connect a a, a background and like a sky to like the foreground i mean sometimes for me that's brutal and like i just have, i struggle so much with trying to do that so i really like have been trying to take a lot of time and and look at like art that i admire like warhammer art and some artists that like do that very well and i'm like how can i how can i do this in like a seamless way where it doesn't seem like too forced yeah, that that's the tricky thing too, because while your style has some elements of realism, it's like if you try to like if you study Karl Kapinski too much, now it's like you have this weird dissonance between the parts of your style that are really powerful and graphic and like eye catching, and this more academic realism st style. So I know exactly what you mean. It's tricky finding that that balance where you're not like losing your style trying to find those avenues you know what i yeah, mean exactly i think that's why i like i tend to look at like a lot of older white dwarf covers just i really like david gallagher's like work and how he connects like uh like the sky and and like what's happening in the foreground and like for some reason the colors just seem to just flow perfectly and it, it doesn't look like you're like forcing something to happen it seems like it's like all just like you're looking at one cohesive piece and I'm trying to like do a better job of doing that because especially that work too that has like a sense of realism to it but it also like kind of how we were talking earlier it is like a little cartoonish like there are like some elements where it's like you know it's definitely like that late 80s like early 90s kind of fantasy sci-fi vibe where like things are like <clears throat> starting to get a little bit more realistic but it's not quite like uh, super realistic like earlier 2000s Warhammer type stuff. Right. Um, I can't think of anything else. Anything else you want to chat about before we pull up your art? Any questions um, you have for me? Yeah, I wanted to, I don't know, you might have talked about them before, but I'm curious, like, uh, if you had to pick, like, your Mount Rushmore of, like, artists in terms of, like, art that influences you, who would you have to on that oh, yeah well it's, it's more fun when i put it on other people you can't put yeah. it on me now <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. um dude i it's tough um i'll try to draw from like different people that are like they, they almost don't seem related at all uh so it'll be a little random all right i i would say rick griffin who is uh pen and ink illustrator in like the comic scene, but he also did uh, artwork for like the Grateful Dead. He just has a very good iconic style and psychedelic and very interesting lines and shapes. So that's what I draw from him. Uh, there's just like this energy and motion to it that I want to make darker and more evil. You know, mm -hmm. that that's kind of one of my goals. Um, Is that something you find like... Uh do you like to do with like more comic inspired art? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything that I do, <clears throat> I want it to have a lot of flow, motion and energy. I feel like that's part of my style and I mm -hmm. want that to continue because it's something that I've always been intrigued by just very interesting shapes. Like I, I almost think of myself more as a shape maker than like an artist in a sense. Like if it has an interesting gotcha. silhouette, and it's like this, I don't, it's hard for me to describe why it's so beautiful, but like, that's what I'm trying to capture all the time. And that's why also like, 
iconic tattoos that have held up over time designs it's because the shapes are strong because tattoos age and they 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 lose part of that initial freshness right but there's still a shape on your skin that is identifiable identifiable and very interesting um so rick griffin and these aren't in any order i'd say bernie writes him uh strong shadows dramatic um obviously he's got the detail and the horror but he's also a very versatile sure. artist he's concept artist comic artist did some of the best pen and ink work ever in frankenstein so i'd say he would be definitely a big influence nowadays it's not like i grew up with like worshiping him it uh in terms of the artist that originally kicked it off for me and taking it seriously, and I, I told him this is Skinner. Oh, really? Just, just the ability to make money making psychedelic monsters, like that. <laughs> yeah. Skinner opened my eyes, man. And like yeah. I told him, he was he was surprised, but like he he made me realize that I can do this, you know. Yeah. Um. So like, Skinner would obviously be in there. Uh. So yeah, I'll add him, and then um, that's three. And number four, I'll put Yoshitako Amano. So he's Final Fantasy artist, illustrator, pen and ink, watercolor, acrylics, kind of blends in like a little nice soft edges. So I draw a lot from him too, because one of my goals is finding that balance between this tight, intricate, interesting pen and ink work with watercolor and making it dark and evil that's yeah. that's what i want to do that's my like i feel like i have a lot more like intentionality now than i had a year and a half ago so i know what i want to do and i'll just keep because i felt like sometimes i'd be bouncing around and like oh i like this style i like that style trying to find my way i like now know what i'm like meant to do at least for the next year so i don't know it's a dramatic explanation of where i'm headed at what about I, you? Uh, I mean, it, it would probably be all like Warhammer artists, probably. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, like, that's just like, obviously. Well, tell like, me what you like about each one. And right. there's like 10 you could choose from <clears throat> at the minimum. True. True. Uh, <laughs> My first one would probably be Adrian Smith, I guess, because that's like the first like huge like uh, piece of like Warhammer art I ever saw. <clears throat> that I talked about earlier, um, and his like style over time is really cool, and how he changed. Um, I have a book that is like kind of like shows like a lot of the Horus Heresy art, and he has some drawings in there that are like kind of like different from where he like he started out completely different from where he ended up. Yeah. But like a lot of like the style is more like loose. It's like kind of erratic and crazy looking almost like he was like looking at uh, like John Blanche's early work where it's like very like sketchy and crazy and, you know, very erratic and um, yeah. was kind of like doing that in his own style. Um, and then just like, I mean, some of his other like later pieces, like the, I mean, the like, you know, you talked about like the chaos night and stuff like, <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's like looking at that is just like insane. Like just achieving yeah. the balance of like uh, insanely like over the top with like just, I mean, gigantic lightning sword and like spikes and skulls. But then it all looks like like that dude could have been like a real dude at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um, number two would probably be David Gallagher. Like a lot, I like a lot of his work. He has like he his work is like kind of he did like a lot of cartoon work. I have like an old, uh, like Warhammer, um, rule book, like just Warhammer fantasy rule book. And he has like a lot of like just cartoon drawings that he did like in there. It definitely looks like it's like a uh, 60, 70s inspired, like the weird, like fancy cartoon type stuff that came out around then where it's like, you know, definitely on my alley. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I can show you if you want, like what they look like. They're pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, do you have it right there? Uh, I have a right beside me. I can grab it real quick. Yeah, go for it. The rule book. I believe okay. the cover is uh, Jeff Taylor. He did like a lot of the covers around then too, and a lot of a lot of the artwork. I believe in like mid to late eighties. I could be wrong. 
That's awesome. Yeah, he has like a lot of. I feel like a lot of his artwork kind of goes under the radar just because of like the, I mean, absolute giants that were making art at the time. But this is some of his like cartoon work. Oh wow! Like completely different from like the the white dwarf covers and stuff. Let's see this? Yeah. It is insane how much it shifted. You know, it's a little oh, more yeah, lighthearted sure. here. Yeah, like you just have a bunch of goblins falling off like a little siege tower type thing. <laughs> he did a lot of the orc art, didn't he? He was kind of like one of the. Yeah, I always think of like orcs as being like his thing. Yeah, he the orcs that he did were were pretty cool. They had like a lot of movement to them. I was actually looking at one of his orc drawings not too long ago, um, just because like I really like the movement that he adds to like the orc characters. Um, and like orcs are just also extremely fun to look at. I mean, every time that they're illustrated in the Warhammer sense, they're like just doing something silly or they yeah. just look crazy. It was like space Marines look cool. You know, like they're, they're like these giant super soldiers, but then orcs are just like having fun. <laughs> so like, I'm sure like getting to draw that was fun too, but yeah, the movement he has in a lot of those characters is, is really cool. Um, so probably David Gallagher would be, be too. Ian Miller. I mean, for sure. His like, the variety in his work is just, I mean, insane and like what he's able to achieve. And then also just like his like Rolodex of what he's done for different people. Um, I just watched wizards not too long ago Mm -hmm. and like those backgrounds and the castles. Yeah. And I didn't even know that he like did art for that. Like I was like, I I just went to that movie blind chase from gate creeper recommended. I watched that movie and I was like just sitting there with my friend who had like grown up watching it. Um, and I was like looking, I was like, that looks like E. Miller, like artwork. And I was like, Oh, this, like, he just did the backgrounds for this. I think for, like Frank Frazetta did stills for that too. And like some of the scenes. And I was like, that is like insane. Like to be able to like, I mean, bounce from making stuff for movies and just like also, you know, Warhammer and some more of the ring stuff too. So. Yeah. That'd um, be amazing. He, he was, He's definitely in my top 10 for sure. Yeah. And like, it's more like surrealist stuff too. It's just wild. I mean, like looking at like some of the shapes and things that he makes is like, I don't know where you begin to like try and create something like that. <laughs> it's like insane, but it's awesome. Um, and then four would probably have to be John. I would say John Blanche. Yeah. Cool. Just his stack too. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, some of those Warhammer art books are, are, pretty dang rare and expensive um mm. not that i'm asking you to flex but maybe you make me <laughs> feel a little jealous here but like yeah. which, which ones do you have like do you have uh it's like the emperor's will or something that's like a john blanche art book do you have that one no i am i'm really kicking myself i i had an opportunity to I, there was a so I, I have some some spots that i go to 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 look for stuff and obviously like you know I'm not going to give away my secrets and how I find some of the stuff because some of it I find, you know, I can tell you off air if you want, but (laughs) for art books, like physical, some, yeah, some art books. Yep. All right. Um, Yeah. Tell me off air. But I, uh, there's a couple of collectors and obviously some of them, like I have shelled out like, uh, you know, questionable amount of money for, (laughs) Yeah. but, uh, a couple that I have that I'm like, I absolutely adore. Are, I don't have like the Emperor's Will. I had an opportunity to get uh, the Inquisitor's Sketchbook, I think, or like the Inquisitor's Handbook, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like looking for ones, and I actually went back to get it in another book, and it was gone. So I was pretty bummed about that. But uh, one that I'm really happy that I have, like that I found, was uh, it's the Horse Heresy Collected Visions. So it's just like a. Sorry, my note, my notes here <laughs> you my can, god you really you can, are a dork man what the hell yeah. is this <laughs> <laughs> is it notes on art you like or notes on like oh i need to study up on this you know, uh yeah, storyline? It's, no, it's it's notes that i need to like i have like i have some <laughs> <laughs> i have stuff bookmarked that i want to like look at to study. Uh, no, that's this crazy. is like this is like less about the this one's less about the story but this one has like a just a great variety of art in it um really has all the legends um 
and it has like all of the authors cited or not the authors, sorry, the illustrators cited in the bottom. So like normally it's like, Ooh, so that's packed. Yeah. It, this book is chunky. It's full of so much art. They made like a card game, like a mobile card game. And I'm not for sure if like they put this together around that time. I'm not too familiar with like when the book itself was made, but, um, yeah, it's just like a great collection of like all the great artists. And I mean, there's just like a super cool variety of art in here. The one, I think it's going to be bottom. Yeah. Right there. Like that's like early Adrian Smith art. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just Horus heresy. Is it a lot of like, um, the, you know, emperor looking, I, I'm not gonna say the terms, right. But it, it's a lot of those like really big, you know, yellow, uh, space Marine looking guys that are like, kind of have like the religious stuff to it. Right. Yeah. That this is like, like the guards and all those. Yeah, not not to get too too nerdy about it, but the Horus Heresy is like the precursor to like everything that's happening now right. in the current like Warhammer world, and that's like the in depth story of like um, the Primarchs and all the that. Primarchs, right? The Primarchs and like the betrayal and the chapters fighting each other. So it's like a lot of like um, a lot of the art in that sense is more like it, it's almost more industrial looking. And it has like more of like a, there's a grittier sense to it because like, it's just like, in terms of stories, it's, it's brutal. Like all of it is just like insane and like depressing from like a storytelling perspective. Um, so like a lot of like the art is just like, it's kind of like that. And like a lot of the bright colors that are used are like not necessarily used in a way that's like, where you see like on the front of a white dwarf cover where it's like, right here, grab this magazine, like, look how cool this looks. It's like, no, like, this is like the world that is happening. Like, everything that's happening in the world right now sucks, and you should not feel, like, amazing about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at how, like, awful this is. It's <laughs> um, pretty much the MO, right? Yeah. My only uh, diss against that book is that there's not, like, a lot of, like, cool demon chaos art. Mm. In terms of, like, if you, like... Like Space Marines and like just the usual like chapters, whether it's like Loyalist or the Chaos chapters, it has some some great art. But in terms of like the variety of like uh, what you're getting in that book, it's not a lot. It's like Primarchs, Space Marines, and that's it. There's some like demon type stuff, but it's not. It, it's not a lot. Warhammer or Games Workshop kind of like lacks on like presenting a great variety of art in like one book usually. Yeah, I, I feel you there, man. Uh, well. Without further ado, you want to pull up some of your art and talk through it? Yeah, sure. All right, <clears throat> sweet. So, first thing, this is a commission for Gate Creeper. And that, uh, actually, was it a Baltimore show? So, like, it did was. you do the, so you did the poster for the show that you attended. That's sick. Yes. Yeah. I was, uh, I was already planning on going to the show. And, um, <clears throat> Chase hit me up asking me if, uh, I wanted to do a flyer design and I, I, to, I, you know, got back to him and I was like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm actually going to the Baltimore show. It would it be possible if I could do the Baltimore flyer. And he was like, sure. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, I like kind of was brainstorming like what to do here. Um, and that was like the initial sketch I sent him on the left. Uh, just kind of like, Hey, like, this is what I'm thinking in terms of like, what's going to be on the flyer. Are you cool with this? And he was like, yeah, it looks great. And I was like, okay, we'll get started with it. And, um, yeah, a lot of intention with this. Um, I tried to make it like as, in, as intentional as possible with what I was including. Um, a lot of influence from like, uh, the Judas priest, uh, painkiller cover. Okay. I think it's painkiller. The one where he's on the bike. Um, yeah, yeah. uh, so like, trying to like figure out how I was going to do metal and stuff. Um, and I like learned a lot about like rendering metal on this piece. Um, just cause like that, I've always wanted to shift towards that direction and do that type of thing. Uh, so, and then I included the Raven, um, obviously cause of the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, <laughs> Oh, okay. So that's um, why. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't big, obvious for me cause I don't keep up with this shit that well. Yeah. Big Ravens fan. So I was like, I'm going to put a Raven in here just cause Baltimore and the Baltimore Ravens. I thought that'd be like a cool, like little, like, yeah, it's a uh, nice nod. Yeah, it's like a, it's a nod to like the city and and the and like the the, the importance that the team has to the city. And I thought it was 
it was neat to like, I, I really wanted to like connect the actual flyer to the location, you know, and not just have it be like, you know, kind of, I guess to your point earlier, just have it be like a mess of skulls and, you know, scary looking demon dudes. I wanted to make it, you know, try and connect it to, to the location. Yeah. Very cool. So how are you doing this then? Like what uh program? It's all procreate. Procreate. Okay. So yep. very accessible. You got an iPad, you got procreate. So is yep. that kind of how you fell into using that platform or you just really love it? What's that like? Yeah, I, I enjoy using it. I had always been interested in digital art. I obviously like growing up, I'd only done traditional art. Um, mm-hmm. I drew in a sketchbook and like just drew on whatever. Um, but I, I always had like a fascination with digital art. Um, and for whatever reason, I just kept wanting to learn procreate. And I think I just liked the like accessibilities in terms of like colors and also like being able to uh, like change the size of shapes and stuff has been, is like really conducive to how I like to my workflow, my personal workflow. I just like being able to do that. Um, Yeah. It saves a lot of time than having to redraw it over and over again. Yeah, it does. And I, I try not to do it often. I try to do it. Like I try to treat this as like traditional as possible where I'm like, I, I, really just want to like treat it as much as like I can in terms of like, as if I'm just drawing on paper and like, I know that's kind of like, uh, no, I get you. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's like, it's almost like, uh, uh redundant to why I'm using digital in the first place, but like, I- I'm trying to also like learn and grow. And if I can just like change something instead of like actually trying to work through it, then I feel like it's not beneficial to my growth as an artist if that makes sense. Oh, I get it. Um, I think it too, just it's part of your, your look, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, it almost looks like you're working on black paper. You know what I mean? So like, I get it. <clears throat> yeah. And like, I, I like the look of traditional. It's just like the convenience of digital. is So it, it, it's just like it, it, after like working so long with digital, it's hard to like, reset my workflow and like kind of get into a space where I'm working digitally. So it's just like, I kind of have it down to like where I can work pretty quickly digitally, but I want it to look traditional because sometimes I think like digital can look a little too like stagnant and too like, you know what I mean? Like too crisp almost like too, too clean. I mean, I, I, I have my own personal preferences, but I always like it when digital artists, use techniques and philosophies and thoughts that uh traditional artists use so like i there's pros and cons with both you know what i mean but yeah, i'm absolutely. obviously a traditional artist and uh it has its downsides um but i love it and i'm addicted to it so yeah i get it but i i i use I, I use procreate um sometimes for like little mock-ups and stuff or like if i'm unsure of how to shade an area i'll literally just take a picture of it and i'll put in procreate and then just sloppily do it like oh yeah that's the right move and it gives me confidence to bring back to my traditional you know workflow that's you know what i mean yeah yeah so like i can use it for like mock-ups or um sending stuff and you know little tweaks like obviously there's like finishing touches and stuff but um what what led you to do this like black background and white drawing? Like, have you always kind of done that since working digitally or you learned something? No, I used to only work on uh, a white background and I just like the idea of like working on black paper had never really crossed my mind. And I was like really struggling trying to figure out like how I wanted to organize colors. And um, I was learning a lot about it and I had seen some like ditch witch art, uh, Corey Corey and he like worked on a black background and I was like I'd never even thought about drawing on a black background like I just never had even like that thought had never even crossed my mind mm-hmm. and <clears throat> so I tried it and I immediately like it like kind of clicked with me I was like I like this a lot better than drawing on white because my my struggle like with like drawing on white had always been like the black like including yeah. black including like something that added depth to the art and working like backwards kind of like adding on to something that has like depth to it already is, has been a lot like a lot lot more beneficial. Yeah. That's really cool. So just kind of proceeding here. Yeah. Some progress on the left. 
I love how you did that uh, shield there. Like the shine on that's oh, really you. nice. Yeah, it took me so long to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Between that and the Raven, I was going to freaking insane. I was like, I, the in the slide before you see how the Raven had its wings up, and it was like, yeah, I had like, I had done it where it was like coming across, and that didn't look right, and then it was going up, and it was cutting into the logo too much, and I was like, I need to figure out how to like do this differently. And I was also trying to draw it like traditionally with feathers. And I'm like, why would I try to make it with feathers? Like I'll just make this thing look like it's like a metal Raven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do that. <laughs> so then I, I ended up doing it like that way. And that ended up being the move, but I, I worked on that Raven for so long. I probably spent, <laughs> I, I probably a spent like, bastard. yeah, I probably spent like one or two days just working on the Raven, but it was so important to me that I was like, I need to, I need to find a way to get this in there. The shield was just tedious, but the raven was like... That was uh, the problem child, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the one that I was like, I was like, uh, I'm really doing this. Like, I'm really, like, forcing myself to put this guy in here. So, oh, but, man, and I sick. ended up, yeah, I appreciate it. I ended up being uh, pretty happy with how he turned out, ultimately. And then the awesome lighting and adding yeah. in the, the 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 fire and i really love how you have these nice soft edges on this uh lava floor oh yeah. you know what i mean like there's no hard lines like it it makes everything work really well together and it makes the central figure pop um so just really well done uh i'm looking yeah really looking at the lava floor now i feel like very painterly it looks really nice well how do you feel yeah. about it i, I mean <laughs> That was another thing I spent a lot of time on and I was kind of like getting frustrated with. Mm -hmm. um, I, in terms of like connecting the sky and a, and a foreground, this was like kind of one thing that came to mind where I was like, I feel like I can do better. Um, I'm, I'm like, for the most part, I'm happy with how it turned out. The horizon line in the background kind of bothers me. I don't yeah, like... Yeah, I see what you mean. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's necessarily like something that's uh, taking away from the piece, but it's something that I still think about. And I'm like, I wonder if I just could have connected that better or like created more of a sense of flow. I do have a different approach when I try to do a background as opposed to the character. Yeah. But the character is like a little more like, uh, I'm trying to create like that central figure. So I am trying to like, uh, just like focus on one piece at a time and mm -hmm. like, take it step by step with the background. I'm, I'm more of like, I have like an idea. So it's just like, I'm just drawing into everything that's, that's there already. If that makes sense. Like when I plan it out, I'm just kind of like trying to make it more painterly, more flowy and not necessarily something that's like, um, segmented. Um, right. I, I'm happy with like how I, I really do like the colors a lot. Um, and that was something I really spent a lot of time on, like going back and forth was the colors and how I was going to like connect the, the reds and oranges and the purple. Cause I knew I wanted to keep the lightning purple in the sky kind of like that. But, um, just connecting it again was, was the big, big challenge for me. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I agree with just about everything you said. Um, if you just look at the bottom, uh, I mean, it depends on the scale of what you're looking at, but the bottom like inch of the piece and you look at how you painted the lava, like I think those colors and the soft edges and everything is like spot on. I also love the burst from the top. It's just, I mean, if you had in the original drawing mapped everything to a perspective grid, you wouldn't have had some of those problems, I think, that you're talking about. I think it's just committing at the beginning to that. Uh, that's, you know, take it or leave it, but there's parts of it that are really strong, is my point. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> that is one thing I want to try and do too, is get more perspective grids going in, in the pieces. And I think that'll probably come with me figuring out backgrounds more and oh, trying yeah. to create like more of that a seamless flow. Like I, um, I remember watching uh, the Jesse Jacoby episode and him talking about like the perspective grid he used for the like two mold piece. Yeah. And I remember I tried like a perspective grid, like not long after that. And it just wasn't, I guess for what I was doing at the time, I just wasn't happy with um, 
how I was utilizing it, but that is something that I want to try and and uh, use more or the perspective grids, just because I I feel like it does like force you to connect the piece in like a different like it it offers like a different perspective and forces you to like connect it in a different way that you normally wouldn't. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I I struggled and still struggle with perspective, but I I struggled with it very bad for like the first fifteen times I attempted it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it it wasn't natural. But now that I like get it more and I take the time to do it, uh, it's made my work improve a lot. So yeah, just you know, I, I you know take it or leave it. Um, but I'd say you probably will fail a couple times at it, and it will be like unnatural. But then when it clicks, it'll definitely help out a lot with the background part. So nice, but yeah, yeah man, I, I definitely I, try it. But yeah, dude, super solid piece, and uh, I'm glad they used it. And we got you at the show with, with some buddies, and then with the logos, looks great. Yeah, I uh, I had some text mapped out originally for it, and then I sent it to Chase, and he was like, "I'll I, I can touch it up, like I'll I'll add some like design choices." So I think he added like a photo texture and the logos and the text in the bottom. Um, so it was nice. like perfect. Um, and uh. Yeah, I'm super stoked with how it turned out. It was awesome getting to like see it printed and post up places. It was like so, so surreal. Yeah. Um I like I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is like I I was like, is this really happening? Like <laughs> uh but yeah, it was super sick. And that's my my friend Jack in the middle and my friend Alex on the right there. Nice. Um super Chase sick took people. that picture on his yeah. uh like yeah. a old school camera. Yep. Yep, Chase took the picture. Um, got to talk with <laughs> that's him. That's an odd feeling. Getting a picture, having a rock star take a picture of you. You know, that's kind of an odd. Yeah, feeling. It, was, it was cool. He's a <clears throat> cool dude. I got to talk with him and uh, Matt, the drummer, for a little bit, and super cool guys and awesome experience for sure. That's awesome man. So I think this is a cool layout of like how you built it. And man, I love like these just like line you know, just sketches here. And you have a really good sense of like three dimensional forms, Thank like, you. The, you know, cylinders and like your, your figures definitely like have a body to them, man. Yeah. That's, uh, I appreciate it. That's one thing I was, I, I've worked really hard at trying to get better at. Um, like when I would draw stuff, like <clears throat> as a kid and growing up, it was all like two dimensional. Like I wouldn't draw like figures like this. It would all be like flat and, you know, whether it be the dinosaurs or people shooting at each other, it was all like, <laughs> it was all like on one plane. So like they were coming at each other and I, I never like fully tried to, uh, work with like 3d aspects and approaches, um, until really a couple of years ago when I started, you know, getting back into art again. Um, so that's one thing I, I like, I, I've been trying to practice that a lot and is like work on like, that approach and rendering somebody at like a, and like having all those like pieces, like look like they're actually like, like his leg looks like a round leg, you know? Right. <laughs> oh, totally, man. So like, I, I try to like, I'm trying to do that. And even, even today I was thinking about it while I was working on something, I was like drawing a, a an arm and I was working on like kind of rendering that stuff out. And I was like, this is like, it just like looks too flat. And sometimes I think it does, but, um, rendering too early, man. That's part of it. You know, yeah. like, and I think that's, what's cool here is like, it looks like a sculpture and that's how a lot of times when I'm sketching, I'm trying to think like a sculptor, even though it's a terrible at 3d art, but the, the principle still stands. Right. God, in high school, I made some of the worst fucking clay pottery, dude. It was so <laughs> bad. I, I was, I and that's the other thing too, is like, I was really good at drawing. But yeah. I was like not that good at like art class where it's like you have this assignment. It's like, okay, we're going to do foil reliefs now. And like all of a sudden I just got all this fucking aluminum foil on my fingers. I'm like, I'm terrible at this shit. You know what I mean? Like, cause I'm not really that crafty and sometimes art class kind of felt like crafts. And I was like, yeah, I was fucking bad, dude. But then I'd show them uh, like a bald eagle portrait. I was, I was really good at like wildlife, uh, drawings and stuff and they're like what the hell that's amazing 
you know, like my, my art yeah. teacher was like blown away, but I, but I was not doing well at everything else. That's for damn sure. Yeah. I, I feel you there. I feel like a lot of the times I was just too stuck on my ways of wanting to draw. And I'd like, yeah. I really, it's not that I didn't care about like other crafts. It was like, I, I don't want to be doing this. Like I'd rather just be drawing or trying to learn how to paint. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely that way in high school. It was kind of funny too. Is like, um, this is just the, the idiot in me, but, uh, it almost, <laughs> the way that it is at the end with like the, the, the headdress thing reminds yeah. me of fucking, uh, Pidgeot, you know, it's like you got Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and then Pidgeot, like an evolution. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Yeah. And I didn't have like the headdress originally sketched either. So yeah, yeah. it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I can't see it. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm a piece of shit, man. I'm sorry. No, I, no, it looks no, awesome, okay. dude. The, the, the fucking gun and then the way the bullets like come out, it's awesome, man. And like you, your lighting is uh gotten really better over the last like year or two. Like looking at your old posts versus like newer, you've really improved at that. I appreciate it. That's one thing I've always also been trying to improving is like my lighting too. And like kind of similar to how I uh, said earlier about like. I really wasn't making like 3d characters or like at least having them in like some sort of perspective where they appeared 3d. I was not like, I was doing all of my drawings and like, uh, just pencil or pen. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really, I never really worked with colors, uh, really until like, you know, a couple of years ago when I was like, I like colorful stuff. I should just try color stuff. So yeah. I'd always like, I'd not really like included lighting other than just like some shading techniques. So this is like, there's been a, a learning process of trying to figure out how I want to do lighting better. Yeah, dude. When, what do you like call some of these characters? Like, do you, so this is like, would you say this is a knight? What do you call that? Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's the Raven Lord. <laughs> Raven Lord. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, there's nothing funny about this. I, I want their names. All right. So Raven Lord, who's this guy? Uh, I was playing a lot of, uh, <clears throat> this is like some Horus Heresy inspired art. So I was playing Definitely. a lot of Space Marine when it first came out. Okay. Um, so he's, uh, I hope I don't butcher the name. It's it's based off like an old Terminator pattern. Um, and they're, they're like a step above Space Marines. They're like these fucking awesome. So is this closer soldiers. to fan art than this particular one? Uh, In terms a of it bit. being based off of something like. Yeah, a little bit. This is like one of the few things I've done. Um, I was trying to like, again, you know, just practice my techniques. So I was like, I, I was looking at specifically an Adrian Smith piece when I was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. He's a couple like really cool older pieces of um, like uh, the, oh, boy, I, can't, I can't remember the names. Oh, the Custodes. They're like these okay. golden warriors that protect the emperor and uh, the older art he has for them is really cool just because it's like these these big golden warriors and there's like a lot of red and um i was kind of looking at those and i was like i kind of want i want to try and do something like that like i want to work with these colors because i really like these colors and see if i can try and capture that type of thing um and then i pulled the i pulled the pelt from like i think it's a pelt that sanguinius has if i remember correctly mm -hmm. i could be wrong but there's like a weird like animal like alien pelt where it's like it's it's kind of like a cat, like it looks like a cheetah or something, but it's not really because it's like polka dot, like weird white and black. So it's like it's like Coelho sense... Deville, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like this. <laughs> oh no, it's, he's got a Dalmatian on there now. What an effed up cartoon, man. Yeah, Fucking I in hundred one Dalmatians. Like looking back, man, that was rough. I uh, I did not watch many Disney cartoons growing up, but that was one that. Uh, I think we had on like VHS or something. I remember that movie like scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then what's this guy's name? Oh, this guy's the Howl Master. Very sick. <laughs> I originally had uh, the idea of like including the two of like these dogs. Um, I think I ended up only going up with one. But again, like working more with like, this is less of like a, uh, I guess it's still kind of like a goldish color. It's it's like a, I guess a washed out kind of gold color, mm -hmm. but more when I was like trying to work on rendering and, and lighting and stuff and trying to like improve those skills. Um, Cause with the, 
with the, I guess the, the cataphracty terminator guy, it was like, uh, yeah, he's, he had like a lot of different sources of color. Right. Um, from like different points, but I wanted to try and incorporate a different character with the hound master guy. Like I wanted to try and like rendering with a different color, but I didn't want to do it in like a full, you know, huge piece if that makes sense. I just wanted to kind of like have something to compliment him. Um, yeah. So I ended up going with like little demon dog kind of guy. Yeah. I really like how he looks, man. The positioning of the, the hound, like, yeah, it's just a really cool pose. Like the tilt feels very lifelike. Yeah. I was like really happy with how that pose came out. I, I, Usually I spend the most, when I'm working on stuff like this, I spend the most time on like just getting that initial pose down um, and just like sketching all this out. Like the guy on the left, like getting that like initial sketch done of like the guy on the left took so long. And I'm, I'm trying to get better at that too. Just source my poses and like actually try and look more at poses. Kind of like what I was saying with like Frazetta stuff earlier. I want to like, create something that has like a sense of action as opposed to just looking kind of stagnant, even if they are just standing there. Like I want it to be like something that he looks like still, he looks imposing. Like he's not just standing there with the sword and shield. Yep. So I ended up just going with one of the hound dudes and gave him some armor and I ended up not making his armor red for some reason. I think I just wasn't happy with how the red was rendering out. And I think just having like the, the red, like, claws and face kind of complemented like the character itself more and just having him armor he looked I like cool. how that red hits that purple though that looks really nice yeah i was i, I was really agree. thank you i was really struggling with what i wanted to do with that and i was kind of like i was kind of worried that the the red would get washed out like or like the sword at least would get washed out with like the lighting um but i think it it ends up holding up. I, I wanted to put that purple in there to kind of break it up so it wasn't just like the red reflecting all over the, the gold oh, yeah. everywhere. It's a nice touch for sure. And I wanted to create like a a sense of like, I don't know, regalness to him. <laughs> like he's like he's like a scary looking dude, but he's like uh he's got some purple in there, so he's like a little regal. He's he's kind of like got a royal uh type of aesthetic to him. <laughs> dude, I, I love how you like think about the broader thing, like what this character would be like or where their standing is and like the rank and stuff. Like, that's cool, man. Like, I don't, I don't think about that when I'm like creating a character sometimes, uh, or maybe not to the same level. So that's really neat. Yeah. That can, that can probably go back to like the space ring books too. It's like just growing up and like, cause that's like always a huge aspect is like the rank and like what position they are and like, you know, what, what is their place in like the squad or what is their purpose? And I like trying to incorporate that when I'm making characters, just cause it, I feel like it's um something that helps me kind of like create elements to complement the character and it helps me figure out new things to try. Cause I don't want to just be doing the same thing over and over again. You know, I want to try and um, add some variety to these guys. So I'm trying to like figure out ways that I can do that in the process that seems organic and not just like me, like tossing something on there just because, you know, no, oh, uh, what are the, um, the insect like Warhammer, uh, faction, what are they called again? Oh, uh, Tyranids. Yeah. Do you, have you drawn yeah. any Tyranids? I'd be curious to see like you take your take on that. I haven't, I haven't really explored drawing like too many other Warhammer factions. <laughs> I, I would like to, but, um, that is that is something that'd be that'd be fun to draw. Something that has like some some more like organic elements to it. Well, it's just like the other thing is, you know, we're talking about like okay, trying new things, but not um, going like completely out of left field. Like to me, that would be like a logical way to like explore something different that's still within this like universe you've developed. So, yeah, I I definitely want to try and do more of that stuff. Um, I think I just you know, to my own detriment, I end up falling into like the same cycle of like making more and more like unique stuff. And you'll see later. You like, like your I try dudes. And, I know I do. And I like, <laughs> I, and I could draw them like, you know, pretty naturally. So I, I'm not trying to like, you know, put the same stuff out there all the time, but like, it's just like what I like drawing. So <laughs> hey, man, I feel you. So here we got a battle scene. 
Yeah. Um, which is interesting, the picture you showed me on the left. So that's like the sketch, but yeah, it's almost like if you didn't know what it ended up being, it's like, what am I looking at? So this, even at yeah. that stage, you had a pretty clear picture on what it was going to look like at the end or like at that stage, do you think there was a lot of uncertainty? Really only the colors were the uncertainty and like okay. some, some of the aspects on the dudes on the right were the uncertainty. And I think I, I mentioned in the discord, I was kind of struggling for a minute like figuring out how I wanted to move forward with those guys. Um, you can see like in the sketch, they're originally orange. And then I wanted to make the, I knew from like the beginning, I wanted to make the bottom like a red type color. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just don't think like the orange is going to, I think they're going to get too lost in the orange. So I knew I, I had gotten the idea from like this night's book that I have that just has like a bunch of art that like showcases like different nights throughout like Renaissance and middle ages and stuff. And, there's one like dude that had like a um like a wolf on top of his head and uh I was like, Oh that'd be cool. Like maybe I can make like a That's a cool like, armor choice, de man. Demon wolf knight guys. Yeah, thank you. I I was like I need to I wanted to add variety in it too. Um so I was like I knew I wanted to make those guys. I was like these this is like gonna be the focal point of like the battle I'm making. I really wanted to showcase them. Um so maybe that's where I got the original idea for orange from, but then they ended up being green and pink. But yeah, from, from the beginning, I, I pretty much have like a lock of like what I, I know I want them to look like. The really only thing that is, is kind of up for, up for grabs is like the, like the eye color and stuff, the stuff that like I kind of figure out at the end. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you, from your perspective, yes, there were some uncertainties, but like, to me, it's almost like each one is like a very big leap. And like, yeah. I know there's like iterative things, but it's like the difference between this and that to you might not be that dramatic because you're already like, oh, I got some of the hard parts done or whatever. But it's like, holy shit, now there's arms coming from the ground. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. really cool, man. Like, I was very impressed when I saw how it finished because you shared in the Discord that. And I was like, all right, this is looking cool. Here are some of my suggestions. Then you completely ignored my suggestions and then <laughs> fucking killed it here. So yeah, dude, good job. <laughs> I appreciate it. I I, wanna, I will say for the record, I didn't completely ignore your suggestions. I did. I did try it. I did try it. I no. did try them. Um, for whatever reason, it wasn't clicking, and I was like, uh, I was like, I'm just gonna commit. I'm just gonna commit to the green because I well, was yeah, like, it ended up coming together fine, man. Because you had that vision of what complete looks like you know yeah cool yeah oh, i'm just teasing dude <laughs> but yeah this is a really sick piece man and like roughly how much time does something like this take for you this took a long time i really couldn't give you a yeah. proper uh like 20 hours this one might have been a little bit longer yeah i think i think just because of how uh back and forth i was going between the colors yeah um and just like how much i had like changed over the course of like the design itself um i was just kind of like i figured a lot out about my process on this one too so like it, that was like yeah i i don't even know i was going crazy making this I, like mentally I was going insane. I think at one point <laughs> I was yeah, like, that's how I was it like, goes. yeah, I was like, I, I wanted to like, uh, I wanted to, I just didn't know what to do. And I was like, I was really struggling with it. So probably longer than 20 hours. Oh, there's the, the, the tunnel vision time <laughs> and the, the self doubt time, you know, like when the, the, the more ambitious a piece gets those, uh, parts of the journey, you know, they're even longer you know, in a lot of cases. Yeah, for sure. But it turned out killer, man. This is definitely uh, one of your best pieces, I think. I appreciate it. Oh, the port this is the portal night. <laughs> now, what makes it a, where's the portal? Like, how is, why is it a portal night? I was just imagine him guarding a portal. Okay, sick. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking about the names, and I was like, oh, this guy's like, because he has like a chrome type, look and that was like one th one thing that i had really hadn't tried to draw before and i was like um let me see if i can try and do chrome i had an idea of how i wanted to do it um like the blues and grays and and the white and i was like i'll see if i can 
see if I can attempt to do that. And uh, I learned a lot about rendering on this too. Um, but for whatever reason, I just imagined him. I could see portal. it. I was like, yeah, I was like, this guy is like, he's not, he's really not somebody that you would like see on the battlefield. I mean, you might, but like, he just looked like a guard. <laughs> I was like, he could be, he's probably guarding something while I was making this. <laughs> That almost sounds like you're like insulting him. Be like, yeah, I want to see him on the battlefield. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's not yeah, qualified. Like, right, right. If I was like, uh, I was like thinking, I was like, yeah, if I put him on the battlefield, he'd look different. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome, man. I'm I'm learning so much about your your art perspective and like what's going on in your head, man. It's cool. Yeah, I I have a little bit of, probably of a weird perspective on how I make stuff, but well, you're like, yeah, just the you really are thinking about them as characters, which, yeah. Uh, I, I, like I said, man, it's always shapes first and like, I'll just, I'll do something. Cause I think it makes a cool shape. And then, uh, it, it, it's just a whole different thing. You know what I mean? Like the things that I am thinking about and valuing while I'm creating a process and a piece is it's like different than you. And that's why I always get so much out of these is I always learn something. And this is my reminder from this one is like, think about the backstory. Think about like those questions, insult them. Be like, dude, you'll never be on the battlefield. You know, like, <laughs> think about those things. Yeah, I, I really do. I, I don't know why I do it, but I really do just like creating a sense of purpose behind everything. Like everything needs to have like. It's cool. A practical explanation to it, I guess, or some reason. Yeah. So, uh, when roughly did you create this one versus maybe some of these previous ones? Like, was this kind of before the battle scene and all that kind of like, you know, a, a stepping stone, so to speak? I believe this is after the battle scene. Okay. If I remember correctly, um, the cataphract, the like Terminator guy is uh, post this, this portal night guy. Okay. Um, the battle scene was before battle scene was, I want to say after, I think it was after the gate creeper flyer. I think I did that one. Cause I was kind of learning more about like the, how I wanted to present metal textures. Right. Um, so I think that is, if that gives you a better idea and this, this did not take me long at all. I did this in like eight or nine hours. Yeah. It looks great. I mean, three dimensional forms are there. <clears throat> Even like your core drawing, I feel like just by itself, you know, is stronger than some of the other ones too. Like you're just improving. Yeah, I um, I, I really just sketch out a bunch of stuff. Um, whether it's like in a notebook, if I don't have my iPad with me, I'll just try and like sketch out forms or ideas in like a little drawing pad. Or <clears throat> if I have my iPad, I'm just doing it all there, and I'm just sketching out characters. And um, I really do go back and forth between like a lot of different forms that I sketch out. I I spend a lot of time like uh, creating like the character's presence because um, that's like again, something I really want to improve on. So that's something I'm always really working on. It's like, how does this, how is this character presented? How do they feel? Um, and I've sent like stuff back to, I just did it recently. I like, I'd sent a sketch to a client uh, asking for a character design. And I'd like, I just kept thinking about it. And I was like, like that character is like, I, I like it, but I'm like, it, this could be better. Like I could do like, I could do a better job. It could have like more movement to it. It can have like a stronger presence. And I just sent them another sketch. I was like, look, like, I think this, <clears throat> This, like if you want to move forward with this other character like sketch you know that's totally cool with me but i'm like i just keep thinking about it and i'm like this is like i think this would be better and like i think this has a better presence a stronger like it matches better with what you want to do with the character and what the character is complimenting did they take that well like that yeah, exchange they were, yeah they were great about it um <clears throat> they were like cool like we we did your stuff so like if you think this is better that's like cool with us and it's like great <laughs> yeah, perfect client right there yeah i and i've done it like other times too where i've sent like stuff back i had um i can show it to you later i can't like show it now but um like to everybody but um it i did like a full like art piece and i like wasn't happy with how the background had turned out and i was just like it was literally on my mind for days and i just kept thinking about it i had already sent it to them and i was like i'm going crazy just thinking about this i'm like i like it could have been better like this could be better there could be more to this like it could 
the background could be more cohesive and i just sent him another version i was like look like this is like i'm not charging you for this at all like i just literally think this could be better and i couldn't stop thinking about it <laughs> oh, that's cool man i mean you give a shit you know what i mean like yeah i really respect that that's sick i really do because like you know if i were paying somebody to make art for me i would want like not necessarily I would, not necessarily that i have the same expectations of somebody but like i would hope that they would have that at least like that that kind of mentality right where they're like giving to you something like giving you something that like they you know, personally love with. as well yeah exactly exactly oh that's you'll learn a lot speaking to anyone yeah. if you have that mentality of just like being obsessed and if you care that much in time it just comes you know so totally man so portal night got used by is this a band Yes, it's uh I sorry if I say this incorrectly. I believe it's uh Heriot Hurriet, something okay. like that. Um I'm sorry if I butchered that. But they are uh death metal out of the UK. Um Jake, their guitarist and he does vocals too, uh hit me up about it and was like, Hey, we like we love this design, like uh can we buy it and use it for a shirt? And I was like, sure. Sick. So, so you already made it and just licensed it out? Yep. I um, have another thing I'm working on for them that will be coming out here soon. <laughs> cool. Did you do the graphic design as well or just the figure? Uh, I just did the figure and I did, I separated the axe for them to put on the sleeve. Uh, they had somebody else do, I guess, like the colors in the, uh, the logo and like, excuse me, the, um, art on the shirt itself um i am doing like some more design stuff for them um but yeah that was somebody else who did the design work cool all right i think we're getting towards the end i don't oh yeah this is the last slide yeah uh i don't remember the name of this guy something battle suit hold on <laughs> Did one job. No, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I like his little uh, companion there in the top right. Yeah, and like he's got a little trail of the, from the light. That's kind of cool. At least it looks kind of like that to me. I was a portal uh, battle wagon. There we go. So this is a guy that you see on the battlefield. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I see the difference. Yeah, got it. Yeah, this guy. This guy is more equipped to be out there uh, killing whatever he's killing. He's got just about everything at his disposal, man. Yeah, this is more, uh, you can tell this is more 40K influence where I'm trying to, uh, this is also me trying to add some variety to what I've been doing as of late um, and go in more into my interests of like also sci-fi type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to take like the same like kind of Chrome application and see if I could do that in an effective way to a character that's like a little bit different as opposed to it just being like a knight kind of guy. I wanted to like see if I could blend uh, the knight kind of aesthetic with like something that is just also has some technology and a shit ton of guns and the little, his little companion guys like servo skull inspired and um, just think about like what he would be doing with uh, the battle battle wagon type character. Sick man. Well, dude, as we're coming to a close here, first, I just want to say thank you. This is a ton of fun. It's great to meet you as well. I know we've been messaging and stuff, but uh, it's always great to like actually like talk, you know? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for thanks for having me on. And it was a pleasure to meet you as well. <clears throat> it's great to have like a, like you said, a legitimate conversation. Yeah. Every conversation you've had at this point has been very illegitimate. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, man. Well, as we wrap up, um, what's, you know, maybe something you'd want to leave the audience with, uh, just in terms of something that's helped you out in terms of your art, art journey, uh, and just kind of where you're at now. Yeah. Uh, big thing is like, I know I kind of touched on earlier. It was just like one thing that was helpful for me again, it doesn't mean everybody learns this way, but like always consuming art, whether it be, I mean, in various different mediums, like obviously do it in a way that's, healthy and conducive to your workflow and if you love art you know if you love art so um but like whether it's reading or listening to like instructional videos or heavy art talk or 
you know, just like learning about people's processes, learning about like the things that people go through, learning about like the different and unique things and perspectives that people have while making art is like super important to my art journey and really has been like extremely helpful for me. Um, and just like applying that to your work and continuing to grind. And I mean, again, it's worked for me. I don't, you know, everybody's different, but like I try to draw every single day as well. And just like, whether it's something little or if it's on a larger piece or a sketch, like I just try to always like, you know, remain vigilant on that end of just like keeping up after my craft and continuing to see, like try new things and learn to grow each and every day and at least attempt to do that. Absolutely, man. Well said. Uh, so you can find Daniel on Instagram. His uh, tag or username is Draugr. Um, sounds like he's got a lot of cool projects in the works, collaborations with bands and possibly some other type of IP, I guess you could call it. But yeah, keep, keep you know, follow him, keep posted with him, engage with him, man. Um, Daniel is a really awesome dude. I see him online, like on uh, Friends of Mine, he's always posting really nice things to other artists and like that stuff goes a long way. So if you see things that you like in other people, beyond just their art, but just who they are, you know, take that good karma and put it out to somebody else too. Not to get all hippie, but like a nice comment on another artist post uh, goes a long way, you know? So just like be a generous and good person. Cause I see that in Daniel all the time uh, online. And uh, I just want to shout that out too. So for everybody support him, uh, I'm going to try to do episodes almost every week it's getting a little harder with the holidays but thank you for your patience like and subscribe god i can't say that any i always f it up every time like and subscribe if you enjoy the channel and um see you soon thank you